Michaela from Team Retro here, where we like retro games, we like roguelikes, and we like the devices that bring them to us. In my last video, I showed you how to get RetroArch set up and running on your Amazon Fire Stick that you may have picked up during Prime Day. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the standalone emulators that I also had you download in that video, specifically Redream, Drastic, and Mupen64 Plus. We're going to go over a couple of quick settings that I use to optimize performance on these emulators, and we're also going to look at some gameplay to see if these systems are feasible on an Amazon Fire Stick. We've got a lot of ground to cover here, so let's go ahead and get started. So here we are on the Drastic Emulator playing New Super Mario Brothers. So let's actually press start to go into the main menu. First thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the screen layout. And we're going to pick Landscape X1. Go ahead and use the default layout. And here you can use the analog sticks on the controller to edit your screen size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move the top screen as far left as you can go. And then I'm going to make the bottom screen a little bit bigger and I'm going to move it to the bottom. Now you can edit the screens any way you choose, but I find when playing DS games on a bigger screen that this layout works best for me. Okay, now that we have our screen laid out, we're going to press B to go back and we're going to save as global layout. So that way when you exit and re-enter the emulator, it will keep your screen settings. Now the next thing you'll notice is that you have access to a pointer through the right analog stick if you're using an Xbox controller, but you can't actually click on anything. So we're going to go into the menu and we're going to fix that now. So let's go ahead and go into options. Go into external controller and you're going to select no mapping. Now let's go ahead and remap all of our buttons. I have an Xbox One controller, so I'm just going to map everything to the corresponding button. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and back out. Now it is going to give us a warning that we will not be able to quit while in game. That's okay because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to map our special. So go into map special and I'm only going to set two things. I'm going to set to open up the menu and I'm going to set that to L3. And then we're also going to set a key for pointer down, and I'm going to set that to R3. All right, that's all the setup we need, so let's get into some gameplay and see how DS functions on this Fire Stick. And I just want to show here that I'm using the pointer on the bottom screen to select the menu options. Now that we've set a hotkey, we can use the touchscreen features of the DS as though we were actually playing on the system. And here's new Super Mario Brothers playing just fine. I don't have any frame skip up on the menus, but everything seems responsive and I don't see any signs of lag here.
notice how Mario and Kirby seem to be running great? Let's try a harder game. This is Pokemon Black, and it seems to be running just fine. From what I can tell, this Fire Stick can emulate Nintendo DS with no problem. Now let's move on to Nintendo 64 emulation with Mupen 64 Plus FZ and Kirby 64, one of the harder games to emulate, is not performing as well as I would like. There's a lot of stutter here. So let's see if we can take the same technique that I used to create a universal profile on the Retroid Pocket 2 and let's try to implement this here. So in order to do this, we are going to go into settings and we are going to go to select profiles. Let's pick manage profiles. We're going to select glide N64 fast and we're going to click copy. Let's give it a unique name. I'm going to name it Fire Stick. Let's go ahead and click Next and then Next again. Then we're going to click OK and we're going to get a profile screen. Now the settings are a little different on the Fire Stick as opposed to the Retroid Pocket 2. So the only thing we need to turn off is LOD emulation. Now that we're all set up, let's go back into settings and select profiles. And we're going to select the new profile titled Fire Stick. And that's the only setting we really need to tweak for this emulator. So let's get into some gameplay. I'm going to focus on mostly the hard to emulate games to see if there is a performance improvement here. And so far, Kirby 64 is running a little better. Now we are running at a native resolution of 320 by 240. So if you were to increase that, it would more than likely result in a dip in performance. But with the settings as they are now, we seem to be running N64 pretty well. There's a couple of dips here and there, but here's F0X. And while I don't want to make claims that this is running at full speed, it is definitely playable. Your mileage may vary, but from my point of view, I think N64 emulation on an Amazon Fire Stick is very promising. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for Dreamcast. I didn't have to do any setup or anything special to get the ReDream emulator running on the Fire Stick. The default functions were all good to go, but it's struggling. I'm going to turn the volume up here just so you can hear the stuttering on Ikaruga, which is one of the easier games to emulate. Here's Sonic Adventure 2, and I'll let this play as well, but to me, this is unplayable. So let's summarize what we've learned so far about these standalone emulators. Drastic for Nintendo DS is absolutely playable. Nintendo 64 with Mupen 64 Plus FC 
is playable, but your mileage may vary. And Dreamcast performance with the Redream emulator was very unplayable on this Fire Stick, which was actually disappointing considering the tweaks that the Redream emulator itself has done to increase compatibility. Overall, though, if you're on a budget and you want to use one of these Fire Sticks for emulation, you still have other systems that you can 100% emulate very well. In my next video, we're going to go over RetroArch performance and see what systems perform well on that app. And that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for leaving comments. And thank you for your subscriptions. We have surpassed 50 subs since this channel started, which is a great milestone, at least in my book. So I really appreciate the support so far. I did start up a Team Retro Discord. If you want to continue to talk about retro games and roguelikes outside of the comments in these videos, I will leave an invite in the description to the Discord, and I hope to see you there. I also stream retro games and roguelikes on Twitch. I will also leave a link in the description to my Twitch channel so you can see when I'm streaming and watch me play some retro games and some roguelikes. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.